Okay, so this is another update to my uh, Mono Game uh, Editor engine or engine stroke editor. Um, so yeah, just another another update. Um, just to show you what I've done. I'm going to run this now just to show you what I've added. So the uh, editor project now preloads all the assets that it can use before it was doing it as and when I was requesting them. But this just seems to make it load a bit quicker. So it literally rips through all the binaries in the project folder and pulls out all the objects that are accessible by the engine and usable by the engine does the same with the script files and everything else and then loads up all the asset or the XMP asset files uh, it takes a little bit of time I've got a fair few assets in this thing uh, and some big textures as well uh, you have to forgive my ugly uh, loading <laughs> loading icon uh, so that's it so now it's going to hopefully load the project up just maximize that so in the scene I've got I've got a sponsor model um, rendered in the scene it's full deferred lighting now so uh, deferred lighting as opposed to forward render forward render means that you're you're kind of limited to well probably a maximum of three to four light sources in your uh, in your scene because each each mesh has to render a light calculation per light source, so that's a that's a you know a lot more calculations than you would for a deferred render. The deferred render basically writes everything to render targets before it does the lighting pass. So we write the color data, uh, the depth data, so then we can find where we are in the world. We write the um, normals, bookmaps maps normal data to a, to a render target as well. And I've actually got a fourth render target which stores, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, specular, reflective, glow, and I've got a fourth channel that I'm not using at the moment. I don't know what I'm going to use that for yet. Yeah, might be for metallic or whatever else. But so this is using um, deferred render. So there's multiple light sources. So I've got, as you can see, I've got what that six point lights. Uh, the sun's a directional light, and I've got a cone light which is attached to my camera as well. So as I uh, as I roam around the scene, obviously not at the moment because I'm in editor mode, but when this camera in the scene, when the game's running, that cone light's going to stick to the camera and follow it. And I've kind of stuck it on the edge because otherwise, to the edge of the camera, you can't really see the shadows that it casts. And I kind of wanted to show the shadow the shadow mapping as well. And the shadow mapping is the same that I did for the forward render. Um, so there's no change there. So it's, I can use both the same shadow techniques for both the forward and the deferred render pipeline. Um, but yeah, I love the sponsor model. It gives you so much area to play with. And as you can see, the lighting's pretty cool. We're getting nice specular shines off the stones. Um, but what I'll do is I'll stop this now, and I'll show you what the uh, what the uh, the outputs to the deferred render pipeline look like. So if I just exit that. So in my code, I've got uh, debug settings. I'm just going to um, comment that out so it shows. And basically, I'm just rendering the the render targets to the screen. So when I want to debug it or test, you know, I so try and see what's going on. If I've got any glitches, there is an error at the moment in my point light shader for rendering specular uh, specular values, uh, which I'll have to fix that. But you'll probably notice that as I'm wandering around the scene anyway. So I'll get this to load up. Hit the big fat texture. And then on to the next load of stuff. I should probably trim that resource down so <laughs> don't take me so long to load on demos. I suppose I could pause the video, couldn't I? But what the hell? Right, so now it should render the scene with the four render textures at the top. Says. Ta -da. Right, so that's the color map. So, whenever a mesh renders, it, re it renders its t uh, color data um, to uh, that that render target, channel zero, and then we've got the SGR map, which is the specular. So, in the red channel is specular, in the green channel is glow, and in the reflection is is in uh, in the blue channel. And I've got nothing in the alpha channel yet. But map data gets written to this one. 
depth map da data to this one and then the light map is what's the a combination of all the light sources right into the to those RT using those RTs and then we combine effectively the color map and the light map to produce uh, the final the final render so as you can see as we move up to you can see in the light map this is a, an orange goldy light that's that's how it's lit this scene but obviously in the column map you get none of that because there's no lighting data but when it's all combined we get uh, this lovely effect my laptop seems to be getting a bit crunchy I think it's my recording software but what I'll do now is I'll uh, I was hoping to show you it um, that's his combat how bizarre oh, I bet you it's caching the the recording isn't it? Um, what I'll do now, oh, I'll show you the line, the line's really cool man. So you can see pretty much all the detail in this, you've got the, the colour map, there's no specular glow or, or reflection on that on that lion's head at all, you see the bump map, the depth, I'll show you that in a bit, the depth, because it's a 30, I've used 32 bit single uh, channel texture, obviously because I want the accuracy on the depth map you have to be really close to anything to really see see the representation of depth um, and then the light map so you can see where oh it's caching again you can see where uh, the lights shining off this wall on the light map and I'll try and get a bit closer yeah it's finished caching so you should see yes yeah, so you see the depth map now you've got to be pretty <laughs> close to visually see that but uh, the data range in there is plenty for to, for the cal light calculations in the scene. Yeah, so even so, we've got shadows being cast from the sun, and we've got shadows being cast from uh, that cone light as well. Uh, point lights aren't casting shadows at the moment. I've got to rock, write that up. I've not done uh, shadows from point lights actually, so I need to uh, look into how I'm going to do that. Yeah, so if I switch say on the sun so that it doesn't cast shadows anymore so that's now you're getting the whole sponsor model with just uh, the lighting on it no shadow map applied so as I move around the scene so yeah the, the, the mesh and the textures for this I think it's really good for doing demos and actually plenty of detail you can see, you know, thanks to the the bump map, the light map can really uh, turn this box effectively into some you know, detailed looking geometry. Actually, since uh, since we've just had a cache, I'm going to uh, switch the sun's shadows back on. And what another thing I've added now is I can now do a build. So a build's going to copy effectively the scene into the project's bin folder so then the project can pick it up and use it in game uh, build and run is going to do exactly the same but at the end of the process it's actually going to execute the uh, XE in the bin folder and I think my laptop's probably going to fall over with the what's it with the uh, with both of them running but we'll see so it should launch the execute we might take a while because it's the first time I've run it today yeah you just about to stop it, then I was panicking. Oh no, the demo's gone wrong. So that's loading up the scene. So, I'll have to switch that back off so we can see it. So now, as you can see, I mean, it runs. Oh, it's, you can see it's still a little bit jittery because I've got two lots of things running. But you can see that the, that cone light's following uh, the camera and where it's looking. So it's a child object to the camera now. I guess the good thing about this is because I've left the debug render targets on, you can see how that light's being applied. So you've got that lion's head, you can see it casting off the cone light casting the shadow of the lion's head. It's some really nice, um, pretty cool looking effects really. So the light's getting cast off that. And what I've done is in the script for this, which I'll show you off, all I've done is attached it to the camera. I can switch off. So I've switched off my torch. Uh, I've switched off the. So all I've all that's left on there is the cone light. Uh, sorry, the point lights. And if I switch those off, so 
it's all completely painted to black now. So it's a bit of a pain to navigate. So if I just switch on my cone light, get some kind of spooky. We're exploring. Ooh. It's really weird because you get so disorientated when you haven't got. Obviously, if those are render targets were enough, I wouldn't have a clue where I'm looking or going. off the flagpole onto the flag. Well, the texture, let me switch the sky back on. There's the sun over there. Yes, yeah, so it's going pretty cool. But what I've also done, so when I kill this process as well, the editor's still got a handle on it. So when I kill it, it's going to know when it's dead. And hopefully, come back to the yeah, back to the editor. Yeah, so the ca um, the main camera itself, I've now changed this so I can attach uh, behavior scripts to it. So it's got a translate rotation and whether it's enabled or not. Uh, so I'll show you that script in a minute, which is in another in another project. Uh, I think on the Sun, I've also got a behavior script I've got disabled at the moment. That's basically just rotating the the Sun around so we get night and day effectively. But I'm not going to bother showing you that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna exit this. So I've now got it wrapped the test project wrapped in with the whole thing so, so I can get at it quite easy. So I've got scripts in there, so I've got my controller script. So this script can sit anywhere, it doesn't have to be part of the project or anything else. My, the engine will pick it up, compile it, and attach it to your object and it'll run it. Uh, it comes with so the engine behavior comes with some basic elements on it. So it, the transform, uh, obviously the game time that's, that's getting passed in, uh, the game object that's being accessed, and the input handler. I dare say I'm going to add a lot more elements to this for it to, to do what it's got to do. Um, so yes, that's the basic behavior script. So this control script that I've got, I've just got basically. Uh, the functionality for moving the camera about or the object obviously it could be any object but that's the transform probably going to change that probably don't yeah too well. it's nice to get direct access to the transform I guess uh, yeah so I've also got methods that can go and get objects in the scene uh, go and get all the point lights in the scene and then what I can do is if I've got a torch found discovered hitting F1 or F2 will enable or disable it the same with the sun same with the point lights um, I can switch them on and off uh, and the great thing about this is that they're interchangeable. You could also, once you've compiled your uh, game and all your source, you could still keep that executable and alter these scripts later on, and the the, the engine will pick them up, compile them, and, and use them against the the elements. Which I guess that could be a bad thing in a way. So I guess if you, I'll have to think about when you do a final release, is maybe not uh, make them editable. Or keep, uh, so otherwise people could just come in. Mind you, I suppose if you want people to mod your games, you could give them access through the scripting system like that. Um, but I'm thinking way ahead of myself. I've not even got it working for me, let alone anybody else here. Um, and that's my trouble. I end up going off on tangents. <laughs> um, so let's go back to the renderer, some scene manager. I'm just going to put that back. I'm going to just run this as a standalone. Um, so hopefully without the the uh, render target showing there Oops. and it might run a little bit quicker because I'm only running the one one process do, do, do. Yeah. no it's because I didn't rebuild the engine did I obviously separate to the engine build programmers eh we're not the brightest bunch are we Yeah, 
as you can see it's much smoother now, it renders much better. You can uh, see the shadows getting cast by a cone light off that pot. Same in that one. Yeah, I think it's looking pretty cool actually, considering it's a home brew. Write this in my spare time sort of gig. Yeah, nice shadows. Really like the stones. All the textures are nice on this mesh. And I've got to thank uh, the guy on YouTube for lending me his. Uh, sponsor mesh. I did have one, but for some reason it would uh, when it imported, it worked fine in good old XNA. But when I uh, ported it to to Monogame and built it in the Monogame uh, render pipeline, um, uh, content pipeline, it had loads of errors and glitches in the. There was like triangles sticking out all over the shop. It was terrible. But yeah, I mean, even you know these little details where you've got shadow cast from the from the edge of the arch, and it's just I'm really pleased with it at the moment. Um, time with doing, starting to work on uh, possibly writing uh, my terrain engine. Uh, quite like writing terrain stuff anyway, so I think that's going to be next. I'm going to. Uh, I've been really, really bad and not remembered the guy's name from Twitter and his handle that uh, got me the mesh for this. And uh, there's no way I'd be able to render this without that mesh. So at the end of the video, on the credits, I'm going to have to put his put his name. Um, but uh, yeah, unforgivable that I uh, I forgot your name, dude. Uh, anyway, I'm going to uh, I'm going to sign off now. And hopefully uh, the next one will be a bit more interesting with some terrain. See you guys.